I love the smell of panic in the morning. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to a uh, post-weekend edition, a Monday, peel yourself off the mat edition of the morning briefing. I'm Jeff DeForest, and that may as well be Spike Lee staring at you in the other box here on the screen. <laughs> Mr. New York Nick himself, Mike Luby Lubitz, who has been saying all along that the Knicks were going to collapse, that uh, it was going to be a problem, that they really weren't all that good. And now with uh, all of the injuries and the fact that uh, they had to sign John Starks and Anthony Mason <laughs> to complete the roster for <laughs> what would figures to be a, a, a very pivotal, very pivotal uh, game five in this series against the Indiana Pacers. We'll get into that. If you're betting the series, though, I uh, hope you're on the Pacers the last couple of days, especially uh, yesterday. That, that would have made it a lot more palatable to uh, watch that game. Bet Online is your number one source for all your summer sports this season. From MLB, golf, maybe you had McElroy coming out of the woods yesterday and uh, winning a golf tournament for a change. NBA, NHL playoff stats, they have it all. All the latest stats, news, scores available for you to follow your favorite teams. Get the latest odds and lines, including the latest team matchups, player props, and odds on just about every sport out there. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to get in on all the action. Bet online where the game starts. Where do we start, Luby? Yeah, we'll start right there in the Big Apple. There's panic in the Big Apple. You would think that Rudy Giuliani had been re-elected mayor and then Anthony Weiner was uh, back into some kind of congressional seat there. You would have thought the blackout had taken place again. You would have thought that there was a ban being talked about. Uh, maybe with the new regime coming in, uh, there was a ban coming out on pizza and bagels. Maybe street vendors were going to be outlawed once and for all in New York City, and they were going to eliminate the subway train and the buses as well, and no more taxi cabs. Well, they're kind of going out of business anyway. But are the Knicks out of business, Mike Luby Lubitz? So what do you think? No Ananobi. He's not going to be out there for game five, and we saw just a thorough thrashing. It finally caught up with the Knicks. The fact that Tom Thibodeau was playing everybody 48 minutes of ball game <laughs> and really has no, no substantial bench to uh, throw out there at the Indiana Pacers, who pace is the key to that whole team. Pace. Uh, they play at a very high pace. They can wear your ass out. And they did it to the New York Knicks across two games. A, a tough one in game three. They, they eke it out, get themselves back in the series. And then an annihilation yesterday. Where does that leave us in the NBA East, Mike Luby Lubitz? Look, I, I think the Knicks have had a nice route. They played a Sixers team that was banged up. And it was funny as Embiid still had – some really good games, but if you watched it, unless you were a Knicks fan who were being delusional, the guy could barely get up and down the floor, and that allowed. And they still went six in that series. So, and he, he did. He looked like a beach whale coming up and down the floor, didn't he? I mean, <laughs> every possession it got increasingly more painful to watch Joel Embiid running up and down. He's like death's door. Like he couldn't get up. He couldn't move. He just couldn't. And he still actually put up good games. And they still went six. And Brunson was playing out of his mind. What people didn't realize is. And that wasn't Brunson playing above his head. That wasn't Brunson playing to the mean, as people like to say. On top of that, Brunson was getting every call. And I said, look, at some point, the refs are, aren't going to treat him like he's Michael Jordan. <laughs> like, anytime he had any contact or it was even looked at, he was going to the line 15, 16 times a game. Like, that's not Jalen Brunson. Get it the fuck out of here. Like, James Harden at his best was barely doing that. And Jalen Brunson, I'm sorry, he's not James Harden. So, to me, it was like, look, if they ever just officiate him normally – you're going to see his numbers plummet. What have we seen when they went back to Indiana? And what have we seen with the games? What For all the Knicks fans are like, what are you talking about? Really? Have you seen that? And it wasn't like they were heavily favored Pacers. They just weren't giving the Knicks the dumbass calls. They were, they were officiating the game a lot more evenly. The Pacers won a very close game three. And in, in set, it set, felt like they set records in game four. Like, and that's what the Knicks are. They, look, DiVincenzo getting you 35. Come on, DiVincenzo, no other people didn't even know he was in the NBA. Josh Hart's a good defensive player, a good role player. He's not a guy that's giving you 20-something a game, you know? Like, And we've seen the Knicks come back to where they were, and they're now in a dogfight of a series. Do they win? Probably. But these guys look gassed, man. They look done. And, that, and that's the Thibodeau thing. He wears guys out so much that they look a lot better than they really are early. And then they look a lot worse than they really are late. That's that doesn't entire... Thibodeau need a, a bowel movement of some sort, something to relieve that tension. <laughs> My God, we talked about this. I mean, if you wanted to use Yiddish slang, he is the epitome. He is the definition. Uh, he, he is the ultimate when it comes to uh, defining the word schlep. I mean, he just looks like a schlep. He, he really does. 
looks miserable all the time, and he has reason to be miserable now. So uh, that got interesting. Uh, there's also there, there's panic all around, but there, there's a lot of panic to uh, dole out here and to examine. Uh, Minnesota, they have to be in somewhat of a panic. No, it looked like they had this thing well in hand. I was actually yes. ready to concede that Minnesota had the possibility, however slim this would have appeared to be at the beginning of the series, of sweeping the defending champion Denver Nuggets out of the postseason. They win those two games in a mile-high city, a near impossibility, up 2-0, going back home. Oh, oh, oh. They play that stupid wolf sound every time an opponent goes to the free throw line because I think they get a free walleye ice cream anytime a guy misses two free throws. <laughs> And to uh, alert the people to the fact that they have something to cheer for. Hey, wake up, you assholes. There's something to root for here. Root for this guy to miss, too. They play that sounder. That's not really a good wolf sound, is it, Louis? Can you do a good wolf sound? I'm not sure. That's close. That's not bad. It sounds like we were there. That's how it sounds. It's a fucking annoying. (laughs) Well, what did Lou Duva bust an ammonia cap uh, underneath the the noses of the key players on the Denver Nuggets. Uh, I mean, talk about a remarkable turnaround. They come back, they win both in Minnesota, and you would have to say, uh, old man Mo, the momentum has shifted completely in that series, and you would fully anticipate, fully anticipate, and this is where it's treacherous being a gambler. You, you would absolutely think that there was no way after winning two in Minnesota, peeling themselves off the proverbial mat, just like we do here every Monday on the morning briefing, that the Denver Nuggets would be primed to go ahead, certainly win a pivotal, pivotal game five. All games are pivotal. Obviously, if Minnesota had won yesterday, Denver would be buried, and we wouldn't be talking about this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but uh, they really have to be sucking on some walleye popsicles uh, in Minnesota after that because you would have to anticipate that uh, the Denver Nuggets had figured out what they have to do, uh, have uh, received the appropriate wake-up call, and now a 2-2 are probably in a position to take command of the series and at the very worst, win that thing in seven games. Celtics and the Cavs tonight. The Cavs were a little scare into the Celtics. And the Boston faithful uh, and, and the Boston faithful are going to be jumping on the bandwagon of the Celtics if they weren't there already because it looks like the Boston Bruins are el finito, my friends. Real <laughs> tough loss yesterday. Go up 2 nothing in the first period, and that was it. After that, the Panthers uh, bounce back, our Florida Panthers, and they're looking very much like a prime candidate, perhaps, Dare I say this? This will be the curse of Rachel Nichols. Woo. <laughs> as soon as you mention something, as soon as you say some high praise about somebody, uh, start engaging in any kind of hyperbole about a player. They're out for the season. They're finished. Their career is over. They end up uh, choosing another path altogether because uh, that's the only way that they can prosper once Nichols had cast that curse upon them. And uh, as you look at the Florida Panthers, I mean, they, they seem primed prime to go on and, yeah, and even, possibly win the Stanley Cup this year, do they not? They're even getting the refs to lean their way in Boston. <laughs> I'm just yes. The fans are losing it. I'm like, guys, you understand that this is just every call they made was actually a legit call. It just, you don't expect that. The, even the one with the goal. The goalie right? interference, the I, I thought, was highly suspect. Yes, He pushed the guy. He did. Yes. But I remember in game one, and again, I bitch about everything because I can't stand Bobrovsky. For the most part, even though he's played well most of the time, he just Bobrovsky was going to carry you possibly to a second Stanley Cup final, exactly. and you hate yeah. the guy. Why? Because he got he's all just, that money, or because he, he gives up too many cheesy goals? goals? No, he gives up exactly like he makes these fucking crazy saves, and he's on his head, and he's and then a guy shoots it from the other side of the yeah. ice, clear path right in. What the fuck, man? <laughs> One minute he's Dominic Hasek, and the next minute he's Stevie Wonder. It's incredible. <laughs> I don't get it. That's my problem with him. But yeah. in, in these playoffs, he's only done it for small parts. But in game one, there for the was most part, he's been great. He's been really good. Yeah. In game one, there was a play where the Bruins literally like knocked a dude into a into the goalie, and then they scored. Yes. And no one even they didn't even challenge it. Now again, it wasn't the guy who scored who did it, and it wasn't bang bang like that. But I remember bitching about it, and no one even batted an eye. So I'm watching that play, and I'm like, he definitely knocked the guy into the goalie and then had a clear path to a goal. I'm like, but isn't that hockey? Like, shouldn't the guy not let him knock him into the goalie? Like, isn't that what they do in hockey, knock each other around? Like, and that's what they said. They said, look, as long as it it wasn't a penalty, he didn't high stick. He didn't beat the No, he shoved him into the goalie, and the goalie actually was impeded in uh, his ability to get back. Uh, I don't know that he makes the save anyway, but – Certainly didn't have any chance once his own player was laying on top of him in the blue. 100%.
How, how they how they didn't overturn that goal uh, was beyond comprehension. I mean, uh, that was about as blatant a goalie interference as you could possibly have. Uh, using the other guy uh, as a projectile and shoving him right into uh, Swayman's face, uh, and uh, that that was that. And, and that pretty much uh, decided the game. Shortly after, Barkov cashes in on a turnover, and uh, the Panthers win it three two. So so they're in command of that series, and you'd have to think that they're going to say sayonara possibly as soon as game five uh, against the Boston Bruins. NHL has been pretty exciting, and uh, we do have some uh, turnarounds. Uh, Vancouver up 2-1 over Edmonton. Uh, well, one of the reasons to be following that, A, you like Vancouver, even though you didn't know anything about them uh, since midseason. You've been talking the Vancouver Canucks. And B, I, I think one of the reasons sports fans are following this is because we live vicariously. When Money Mayweather bets like 500000 on the Chiefs, or uh, one of these guys, celebrities, has a giant bet that they make us all aware of. Um, in this case, it's David Portnoy, who uh, has pocketed enough money off Barstool Sports where he really doesn't care what he's doing anymore. It's great. He's doing pizza reviews and making $500,000 million dollar bets. <laughs> he put it in on Edmonton. I think it was 150000 That gave me an interest in following the Edmonton Oilers to see if this guy could win a million bucks, even though he doesn't need the money. And uh, sure enough, Edmonton now in a 2-1 hole after Vancouver. I uh, was able to uh, win that game in Edmonton last night. And uh, then the Stars and the Avalanche, the other series in the West. Interesting. I, I don't know. There's not a lot of steam behind that. Uh, the Avalanche at one point during the regular season uh, were among the favorites to win the Stanley Cup. That kind of faded and fizzled a little bit. And the Dallas Stars, uh, very interesting, Luby, as we told you. Uh, looking at a handicapper, they were down 2 nothing in their opening series after losing the first two at home in Dallas against yep. the Las Vegas uh, Golden Knights. And uh, what does this handicapper recommend? Now's the time, right? <laughs> Don't fire till you see the whites of your eyes. For God's sake, they're right on top of me. Right? And these guys are trying to shovel another round in a musket. Uh, and that probably wasn't the greatest of strategies. But uh, the uh, Stars, who, who lost those first two games, if you fired off on that, uh, you're in pretty good shape right now. As uh, Through their second series, they're now up 2-1 on the Colorado Avalanche and uh, looking very good. Under the former Panther, former Devil, uh, former San Jose Shark, former Golden Knight coach, Peter DeBoer. You get a lot of jobs in uh, the NHL. Uh, you're going to be around Lavalette, six teams he's taken to the playoffs, the uh, Rangers coach. And it looks like he's going to find a way to advance to the third round. So uh, tremendous action over the weekend. Uh, we did see something very unusual uh, on a uh, side note on the tennis courts. They're playing on a red clay in Italy. Yeah, they have the Italian Open in Rome. Novak Djokovic. Uh, the day before, uh, I guess it was, yeah, Friday, uh, he, he uh, gets hit in the head with a bottle. Somebody throws a bottle. Uh, I guess he was walking towards the arena, and somebody threw a bottle of water, hit him in the head, uh, and he said he was okay. But um, he, he looked out, out of sorts. He looked almost dyslexic. Um, it looked like he was suffering from vertigo yesterday. And he goes out there and gets eliminated in straight sets in about an hour and change. So I, I don't know if he was uh, wandering around seeing bugs or if his eyes were kaleidoscopic. Maybe he was seeing three balls as they were coming across. But we wish him all the best. Uh, a guy having an incredible campaign at his age or at any age for an athlete uh, that's competing at the very top level of men's sports in an individual sport, no less. And uh, he gets bounced out in the third round of the Italian Open by a guy. We should always have the opponent's name, right, when some scrub knocks off a big superstar. And it was uh, Alejandro Tibilo. That uh, knocked him out. Straight sets, held his composure. You're waiting for a Djokovic to rally. He didn't have it, and he's out. And then you got the PGA uh, coming up this week. A couple of big events uh, coming up on the weekend. The PGA tournament starts Thursday, and you have a lot of the Live Tour players going to be uh, coming back and being in action, mingling with their PGA somewhat partners. We don't know what's going on with that deal, but it certainly appears like it occurred under some clandestine circumstances, my friend, as uh, nobody knows what that deal is all about. Even Tiger Woods, who they had to hand like $100 million just to say, listen, shut up, Tiger. We'll take care of you. Still pales in comparison. I mean, imagine Tiger's got to be steamed that he gets $100 million for staying loyal to the PGA, while Phil Mickelson for being an outright defector, traitor, turncoat, picked up $200 million while being completely washed up. Although I, I don't know the Tigers winning any more tournaments either. But anyway, the PGA gets underway this weekend. You got the uh, second leg of the Triple Crown, the Preakness Stakes, Mystic Dan. That was the big mystery. Mystic Dan, the winner of the Kentucky Derby. It is weird. I, I don't know that they're ever going to change that, Luby. Uh, th there's been talk about this forever, changing the structure of the Triple Crown. Some of the old schoolers would say, well, that's the way champions uh, are set to prove themselves. Yeah. They have to race three times at incredibly long distances in a five-week span, something they'll never do before or after 
uh, the Triple Crown Series. A uh, very arduous uh, title to win, the uh, Triple Crown in thoroughbred racing. Doesn't happen very often. Happened a couple of times recently, and that was after a 37-year hiatus. It's almost like the home run record in uh, Major League Baseball. But uh, nonetheless, the uh, Preakness second leg is going to feature Mystic Dan and, and a field of, uh, as my buddy would say, uh, we get some new shooters in there. A lot of uh, newcomers uh, to the equation, and uh, that's always dangerous uh, as they'll uh, go a mile and three sixteenths at Pimlico coming up on Saturday. So uh, lots to look forward to, lots to talk about this week. Uh, Mike Luby Lubitz, uh, always a pleasure. Uh, you could be right about a couple of things, that the Celtics aren't all that good, and that the uh, New York Knicks are doomed to failure. We'll see. That, that's going to be, if ever there was a pivotal game five, this is it coming up, right? <laughs> Madison Square Garden. You have to assume whoever wins this game is probably, probably going to go on and win the series, although there's uh, no guarantee. All right, a lot of fun being with you. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in. Caffeine TV, nofilter.net, all of our other various platforms that carry the show. For Mike Luby Lubitz, I'm Jeff DeForest. Thanks for tuning in to this Monday. Peel yourself off the mat edition of the morning briefing.